Hello everyone and welcome to our launch for the Story for Change campaign. My name is Rama Hamid and I'm the project coordinator for the storytelling campaign. I am hosting this session today as your MC, while my colleagues and co-organizers will provide assistance in the background. We are so glad to share the next hour with you, kicking off the exciting campaign together with you, creators and leaders from across Canada. We know you are watching us from this digital session from across the country. So we want to invite you to recognize the traditional indigenous lands that we are on. We as organizers want to acknowledge whose lands we are reaching you from with this live stream. From what has only recently been called the city of Vancouver, we acknowledge the traditional ancestral and unceded lands of the Musqueam, Squamish and Slave or Tooth people. Indigenous people have been caring for these lands over a thousand years. We acknowledge deeply and appreciate their continuing resurgence, storytelling, and teachings about the relationships and responsibilities between indigenous communities and settlers. We invite you to learn more about territories and post the indigenous lands that you are currently watching from in the chat box. As we turn to our program, please note that the session and the following Q&A session will be recorded. By joining this Zoom presentation, uh, we are not asking you to use your camera, or microphone to participate. You can submit your question to everyone via the Q&A function. If you have any technical issues or questions for us, please send us a direct message using the chat function and we'll do our best to help. We will monitor the Q&A window and mentors will answer the questions submitted. Uh, after the presentation, the recording will be uploaded to our public website, viewed by other people and members of the public. The recording will not include attendees' names. So the campaign itself, uh, the story challenge for change campaign, we ask you to reflect on what belonging, diversity, resisting racism and justice, continuing and personal journeys of starting off mean to you. We know you have important ideas, experiences to share with that will shape our future. Our challenge for you is to create a video in form of a 30 second to three minute film you will submit your film and you will be entered to win some amazing prizes as well as having your film shared widely across the country. To find out more about the campaign, uh, please visit migration.ubc.ca forward slash storytelling for change. You will find this link posted in the chat box. To launch this campaign, I'll help you start thinking about making a film. We want to bring to you some expertise on storytelling and filmmaking. We are looking forward to hearing from two mentors, Suparna Gupta and Adi Tola Tumunikube. First, Suparna will present storytelling, then Adi Tola will share her guidance on production before we have a Q&A. So let's get, with our, let's get started with our first mentor presentation. So the first one will be Suparna Gupta. Suparna Gupta is working in communications for the city of Vancouver, Musai. South Vancouver Neighborhood House and 10 settlement agencies. Supana completed her studies in marketing management from Langara College in 2019. She has been passionately working in digital marketing for years. Supana also has a mechanical engineering background and she has worked with the automobile giant Suzuki in India. She is an avid reader and has a command over four languages. Supana's current project, Reach Out, helps newcomers to find support to settle in the city and also aims to work with long-term Vancouver residents as a channel to connect with newcomers. Suparna is a part of the Leaders of Tomorrow program organized by the Greater Vancouver Board of Trade and is volunteering for their communications team. She has also been a former board member and marketing director for the Punjabi Market Regenerative Collective, a group of professionals, artists, entrepreneurs, and advocates who are working towards revitalizing Vancouver's historic Punjabi market. Suparna is passionate about community engagement and development. I'll pass on to Suparna for her 15 to 20 minutes talk. Okay, Suparna. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Storytelling for Change campaign. I'm Suparna. I'll present you the Mastering the Art of Storytelling. Uh, today we will be discussing about what is video storytelling, video storytelling basics, how to make a storytelling video, its techniques, some tips, 
and five idea ideas for videos that tell a story. I'm a communication, co communication coordinator and a digital marketer. Telling a story is a much more effective way of engaging people and getting your message across than broadcasting some facts or statements or figures. Furthermore, that message is more likely to be remembered if it's been conveyed in a narrative form that is easy for people to recall. For starters, storytelling forges connection among people, people and ideas. Stories convey the collect, uh, culture and values that unite people. When it comes to our countries, our communities and our families, we understand that the stories we hold in common are an important part of the ties that they bind. So what is st uh, storytelling? The word storytelling pretty much speaks for itself. Stories have always been a way to communicate before people learned how to write. They, they would tell each other stories. Stories are much easier to remember than simple facts. Also, stories are enjoyable. They stimulate your imagination. That's why our parents tell us stories. And that's why we like to see movies and read books. And everyone has a story to share. So why use storytelling? Storytelling is not a process. It's not a method or technique. In fact, it's an art. And you can master it by practice. And it requires creativity, vision, skills, and practice. It isn't something you can grasp in one sitting. It requires persistent efforts. And if you use stories in a good way, you can even inspire people to take action. Um, story, uh, storytelling is a trial and error process of mastery. Stories grab our hearts. They engage our emotions. They make us feel something for characters and allow us to empathize or even sometimes in stories, we imagine ourselves in them. Reader storytelling basics. Basically, storytelling can transplant ideas, thoughts and emotions into the minds of your audience. Stories cause almost all, all areas of the brain to fire at once. During the early stages of producing a video story, one uh, video story, you have, to, you have to answer some questions. And once you decide to make a video, it's very important to answer these questions to pave your way to process. First is plot. First of all, when you decide to make a video, you have to decide what, what's your plot, what what's, would be the structure, what would be the story that you want to conduct, and why do you want that story. Purpose would be why specifically this story you want to convey to the viewers, what is in it and what action you want them to take after it. People, they play a major role in the story. Your video can be animated. It doesn't even require people, but there are characters in every story, even if it's animated. And how do people relate to your, how do audience relate to your characters? Um, place, what is the main location for the video? Sometimes your background and where you're shooting the video plays an unsung hero in the video. It enhances your beauty, in it beautify your video, it enhances the features of your video. Audience, who will primarily see the, see the video? Who is your audience? Might be, is it for the kids? Is it for the adults or is it for everyone? Distribution method, once your video is done, you want to promote it and you want to tell everyone so that it goes viral. Uh, how to make a storytelling video. First, you should know how to narrate a story. Nowadays, people have short attention span. That's why TikTok's 15 second videos gain so much, uh, gain so much popularity are in trend these days. And always remember to edit the video so you're not spelling out every single detail idea to the audience. And sometimes you want to tell the story that keeps them hooked from beginning to end and for that you need to grab attention and for that you have to do the editing and you have to add good music. Music enhances the mood of the stories and the videos. There are four steps to make a storytelling video. Identify your goal and target audience. Once you know what you want to achieve with your video story, who is your target and what you want people to learn from it or are you explaining a process or, or are you telling them about a trend, you want to identify all of these before you start making a video. Create a narrative. It's very, it's very crucial that the plot of the video is clear. 
don't can don't mix two stories or three stories or to make it more complicated or to make it more intense but sometimes it confuses the audience they doesn't know where the story is heading so it's very important to have a clear plot and to create a narrative for the story decide on a video format your video can be animated it it can have live actors special effects it can be in the form of a interview or in the show process but you have to decide it before you start making a video what format you want to go on create a strategy before your videos go live before it are published you want to start spreading the word immediately and for that you have to create a strategy how to do that and it has to be done before you start making a video um so there are some video storytelling techniques video storytelling techniques that are more suitable will vary depending on your goals and your aim for example if you are making an explainer video you might rely on animation or statistics to drive your points but if the video is about a personal story you may want to use actors to tell a story that relates to the audience's key points incorporating actors can strengthen the human connection and for more and far more than animated video and may boost relatability and engagements there are the some video storytelling techniques that we can see so make your characters lovable and relatable people like it's not like you cannot have great characters in your video but don't have unpleasing personalities or unpleasing characters in your video that people can't relate with edit the video for maximum storytelling effect there are some sex, sex, uh, aspects of the video that do not anything for the for to push the story forward once you are done with your video always have always ask for the opinions for you from your friends or from your families so that they can tell you that this section doesn't work for your video or you can edit it or this can work better make it visually beautiful or appealing think about how camera angle scenery and eye catching fonts could enhance your video the backgrounds your color palettes the costumes and everything plays a very major role in 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 presenting a beautiful video video storytelling tips video content give you the ability to alter what your audience think feel and do so if you look closely at different types of stories it is different to know it can be difficult to know where to begin with developing a video story before you get started consider these video storytelling tips to maximize the video's plot and mood and to grab audience attention and to keep it so if you look closely at different types of stories they tend to follow certain plot lines that you are aware of so if you are unsure what can be the plot of your stories go for the plots that ha that have already been there one is the overcoming the monster that is in every sports movies or in every action movies and it often involves the underdog conquering the most significant challenge and then making himself a hero and and you have to maintain your attention audience attention span as in today's time it's very crucial to grasp the attention span of the audience till the end of your video no matter what kind of narrative you go with keep attention spans in mind people often want to know the best length for a video and the answer varies depending on platform it depends for what is the target of your video you might want to share it on the tiktok that is like 15 seconds or you might to do it on the instagram which is 30 minutes use emotional triggers film makers use a variety of tactics to keep to capture emotions visually and communicate the character's feeling to the audience via the screen for example slow motions can emphasize the significance of a feeling or exaggerate facial expressions and can help the audience internalize the emotions of the scene there can be a lot of emotional triggers you can use you can use a flash you can use a background you can and in fact you can trigger a lot of emotions by using good music and the right music actually can take video storytelling video still uh, video storytelling efforts to greater heights by complements what's happening on the screen people can relate to the music and they can associate the music with the kind of story that they are seeing be relatable tell a story that shares a human experience so more people can relate to it but it in, in spite of the human experience or anything you can in fact share a lot of animation or fantasy or anything people can relate to it as well be economic ensure that each part of the video drives the story forward 
there is no point of having the parts or the aspects of the video or of the story in the video which doesn't push your story forward it just makes it lengthy and it makes more complicated for the audience use a natural informal tone it helps audience to better understand and to connect to your message and to set up a emotional content or to emotional connection with your story take design and visual factors into account this includes lighting wardrobes your video palettes your mood your music and everything and you have to take all of this into account power of storytelling all of these points that we have discussed that plays a major role when you are making your video a video is not only about the editing and produce, producing or doing adding effects if it lacks a good story you are definitely lacking in your video it works video story works so well because it draws people in it holds their attention span and makes them feel invested in what's happening if audience can relate to your story what is happening in the video they will definitely set up a connection with it and it's and sometimes it's oh, people are only going to watch your video for one time and it's it's better that you left your impression on the first go there are some ideas that that you can make a video on first is showcase your expertise by creating a video that goes deep into the subject that you are expert in using easy to understand and explanation that will resonate with your audience explain our trend what are people talking about these days if that's already a buzz about a specific topic and you know enough about it you can definitely pin a conversation by creating a video about it show up process still no ideas try creating a video that show a step by step process you might have a expertise in it and you might want to show what a process looks like you might want to create in in with a with a show up process video you can in fact also create a interview video inspire you can also inspire viewers to watch and share by sharing an inspirational and aspirational story it can it can be your story or people around you or the thing that you can inspire with you can you are inspire of get personal finally don't be afraid to get personal and to tell your own story um basically storytelling can transplant ideas thoughts and emotions into the mind of your audience stories cause almost all areas of the brain to fire at once and release oxytocin to boost what does this ultimately means it means stories that you are telling to people people can relate to it people can you can lift up their mood and you can tell them what action to take what you want to inspire with if you want if you have any question if you want to find me you can find me on the social media and thank you for participating thank you very much suparna uh please add your questions to the q and a box and we will get to them after the session uh next uh it should be aritola so aritola tumukube is a movie and content producer media practitioner and a marketing specialist aritola has an underlying love and for exceptional radio television and market and film production She has produced dramas, talk shows and other entertainment programs with content running from on stations across Nigeria and other African countries. She is an associate member of the Advertising Practitioner Council of Nigeria as well as a member of the Electronic Media and Content Owners Association of Nigeria. Aritola has a degree in chemical engineering technology. She is a founding partner at the LT Media Services and has been in the media industry for over 15 years. Aritola is happily married with three lovely children. So Aritola, take it away. Hi everyone. My name is Aritola and I'm glad to be here. Um when it's time for filmmaking or storytelling, I'm always happy because that's what I enjoy doing. So speaking with us today, I I'm so glad because I enjoyed talking to you about filmmaking. I started making film films in 20, 2003 as age 19 so it's such a delight to be here next please okay so um thanks drama for the introduction 
Can I have the next slide, please? Thank you. Okay, so today I'll be talking about filmmaking process. So filmmaking basically is about storytelling. Storytelling is the way in which you make a film, which, in which you present a story to your audience. Also, storytelling is, is an opportunity to tell a, a meaningful story about your culture, about your community, about your, um, about, about your community and diversity, different issues actually. So I'll say, for me, it's, 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 I, I enjoy being on this conference because we're talking about storytelling for change. And when people watch your story or when people watch your production, and also I like to state here that filmmaking process is not just about making movies or about making films. Filmmaking could be making documentaries or DIY, do it yourself, or a cookery show or a tourism show. So it's not just um, about making movies when we say filmmaking. Yes, yeah, so it's, it's about educating people and entertaining people, basically. If you are making a movie and, or telling a story and you want to entertain people, you should also know that you need to educate them. You need to, you, you need to educate them. So like if I'm watching your movie, maybe you are, you, you are a Kenya or a Ghanaian and I'm watching your movie, I want to see, I want to see the Ghanaian in your movie. I want to see life in your, in your movie. You know, I want to see that, okay, if you're showing me this movie, this is a, the particular way Ghanaians dress. This is the way Ghanaians talk. So I want to hear that. Like in Nigeria, we say, in Nigeria, we say church. Then a Ghanaian, we say church. A Kenya, we pronounce it another way. So if I'm, if I'm probably on the road and I met with a Ghanaian and the person, talk, I should be able to say, oh, this is a Ghanaian. I watched so so person's movie or project and I saw that, okay, this was the way the person spoke. So let's, in filmmaking, you need to be original with your storytelling. So if you are using an Indian lady, let her dress Indian. Let us see the bread dots and all of that. So it helps in educating people to know more about the culture. As, as much as you are trying to entertain them, let them know the culture and the background. Let me be in my house in Vancouver and watch your movie and, I, and, and I'm seeing Indian. I mean, do you understand? So that's it basically. So we have five steps of filmmaking. We have the development stage, we have the pre-production stage, we have the production stage, and we have the post-production and the distribution stage. And uh, yes, yeah, so our first um, mentor uh, did a lot of justice to the um, scripting part of it because you're developing, so please can I have the next thing please? So the, so the development stage is the stage before the script. So the moment a producer thinks about a project or a writer start writing, a script, that is when your development stage is birthed. Do you understand? So before you have any form of planning or any form of project, you should have your script ready. You should have a good script ready. So your development stage is the stage where you create and you organize and you write your script, you do your planning and all. That's when you, if you, are, if you would like to direct your movie yourself, then you have to make up your mind at the development stage. If you need to hire a director, then you need to also make up your mind at the development stage. So that's the stage where you choose your location, you do your recce. Recce is you going to, if you want to shoot your movies, you go to the location where you're going to film and you check the colors of the, the colors, the ambience and all of that. Because your ambience should, um, should breathe life to your production. So you want to check your, you want to check your the location, you want to check if there are switch, if there are bulbs, where your camera guys would set up, where the light guys would set up. Also, when you are doing your recce, you should, that's scouting for your location, you should go with your gaffer, that's your light man, and your, your cinematographer. 
because they need to see the colors. Do you need to repaint the location? Do you need to get um, extension boxes and all of that? Is the place well littered? What kind of light would you need to use? What kind of gears do you need to use? So that you get all of that. You do all of that at the product, at the development stage. Next. So next is the pre-production stage. So as it is called, pre-production is where the scripts are amended, where everything is adjusted, where you cast your actors also. So when you write a script, after getting your script along, at the pre-production stage, you can have like a script conference where you invite more people to come on board and check the script with you. So with your writer, or if you are the writer, you just need to invite more people to sit with you. Have like a script conference where you discuss the script, where you dissect the script basically and check, okay, is this okay? Can we take it? Can we take this out? How about using this? So just dissect your script basically. If there's any form of amendment that needs to be done, you do all of that. Also, the pre-production stage is a stage where you do your shoots, shadows, and your set design. So do you want to build a set for a particular um, scene or your costumes? And I like to say this, in filmmaking, your set design and your costume have a lot of role to play in, in your film. So like um, when, maybe the person that will talk about camera and lean and the director would shed more light on this because you need um, your set to be colorful. It, it, it depends on your mood, right? So if your script says this is the mood, your design, your set design should go with that mood. That, I mean, you can't say someone is happy and the person is in a black, in a, in a dark room and the place is not well heated and the script says the person is happy. So that should not happen. So that's why you need a good set designer or you need to design your set well. If you're going to design your set yourself, you could set yourself, you could read up on it, basically. But just ensure that your set is in line with the mood and the tone of your scripts. So you want to work on your set and also your costume. Okay, so for costumes, there are colors, costumes are the clothes we wear when shooting, right? So there are colors that are camera friendly. So the cinematographer says, okay, maybe the purple, the yellow, the orange, the red, the blues. So those are fine colors that you can shoot with. So you want to ensure that you use um, right colors, I mean, camera friendly colors of costume so that you can have an overall, can have a good shoot and a good result end point when your film is out or your shoot is out basically. So you want to ensure your costume and your design is very, very, very on point. Also, your pre-production stage is the footage, the shoot format. Okay, which format are you going to be using for shoot? What type of cameras? Understanding your resolution and the and making the money decision. Okay, so what's your budget for this film or for this project? So how much do you want to spend on this project? Okay, is it that um, it's not you don't have any budget for it you can actually choose for free if you have friends that are filmmakers or if you like to shoot alone then it might take a while but if you have friends that are filmmakers you could say okay you do this for me then when you have your project i would also help out in doing something so your pre-production is when you want to make all those um, all those decisions your gear list your light your camera your sound if you don't have budget for lighting, are you going to use daylight to shoot? If you don't want to use a professional camera, do you want to use your iPhone to shoot? So you're, you're just going to navigate all the technical conversation with your directors and your team basically at the pre-production stage. Next. So, yeah, so I'd like to talk about the pre-production essential. Like I said, educate while you are entertaining. Oh, fine. You, we know that, okay, but the primary role is to entertain people while watching your project or your film and all. But you need to educate people beyond entertaining, educate them and all. So also connect with your audience emotionally and 
also, if you could infuse a bit of humor into your story, that could also make a huge impact. And as a good filmmaker, you should be able to create some unexpectedness in your stories. So if you're shooting a film, and um, I should not be, I'm not expected to know the end of your movie in the first five minutes or how your movie should end in the next, in the first five minutes. So there should be a little bit of suspense and unexpectedness. So don't give your audience that um, chance to be able to predict how the movie will end so fast. Also know your audience. So who are your target audience? Who are you making this project for? Are you, who are your target audience? Are you targeting children or parents or youth or male or female? What age range are you, are you targeting? Where is that geographical location? Do you understand what class of people are they? So you need to determine that before you go into production basically. So also know your platform. Which platform are you shooting for? Are you shooting for YouTube? Are you shooting for cinema? Are you shooting for uh, SVODs? That's like a paid um, online platform. Which So you need to identify the platform you're shooting for. Are you shooting for, for Instagram or for Facebook? So Because that would guide you. That would guide the number of minutes you're going to shoot for. So if you're shooting... Like, if you are having a three-minute shoot, then you know that, okay, the rushes I'm getting should be, like, like um, 30 minutes or one-hour rushes so that by the time we edit and all of that, I should be able to get my three minutes. So you need to make up your mind and know the platform you're shooting for before you go to location. So that's the pre-production stage. Also, music matters. The soundtrack behind your music can define the success of your movie. Also, your opening session, video, the, the music you use, the closing notes, and all. So just remember that music is important in setting the mood of your project or your film or your story. Next. So filmmaking is, is a visual mood. Do you understand? It's a visual medium. So if you are filmmaking is what we can say. It's not like a novel that we are reading. So we are seeing it, so show us in the movie, don't tell it. So you show your story, you don't tell it like, okay, tell it, let's read, okay, from point A to B, no. Show us, let us, that's, that. You, your filmmaking, in your film, we should be able to see the power of vision, you know, in the story, in telling the story as well. So that, that before, um, I, I mentioned something about um, your set design your costumes and all of that. So ensure that all those factors show the stories, show us what you're trying to communicate. Without your actor talking, you should be able to know the mood of the actor with this background, with the tone, with the music, with the facial expression, with the costume the person is wearing. We should be able to say, oh, this person is sad or this person is happy. Do you understand? So show it, don't tell it. Yeah, next. I think I've taken one of that. Next. So, this is a film pre production workflow. So, you have your script development, then from there, you set up your company, you have your budget schedule, you hire your key department heads if it's a big project. So, like your director, like your light guy, like your sound man, like um, your set designer, your costumer, your makeup artist the special effect guy. So that's where you, you do your creative planning next. You define your budget and you work on your schedule. You secure rental, rentals, your props, your permits, locations, and all of that. Then you hire your crew, you do an audition where you pick your actors to you do your rehearsal and you have your final prep. Next. So next is production. So at the production point, we have the writer, we have the director, we have the producer. This is the point where we do the real magic. You know, we have all the creative minds on board. So this is the, this is the stage where you capture all the ideas, all the scripts that you have. This is where you want to shoot it. This is where you want to have all the expertise. This is where you want to have all hands on deck. 
So production is where everything happens. So when you are, so production is where is the busiest time of filmmaking. That's when you have all the actors, you have everybody on set, and you start filming. You start filming basically. So uh, let's talk about production essentials. So you should. The first thing I'd like to talk about here, and the, is the most important thing. Right? Yes. Yeah, so it's that you should shoot more than you need. As a filmmaker, always shoot more than you need. What do I mean? Okay. So if you are shooting a three minutes a three minute documentary. You should have at least um, 30 minutes to one hour or she is. Yes, so ensure you have enough materials. It's better you have more than have less. Because at some point during production, you might not even be able to finish your shoot. I mean, due to unforeseen circumstances, maybe due to rain or COVID due to anything. So if you have enough rushes, you could edit and make use of what you have. So as a filmmaker, as a filmmaker, always shoot a bit more than you need. Also ensure you watch and monitor your footage. Check your camera angles, check the shadows, check the noise, ensure there's no noise and all of that. So watch what you are filmed and check it is okay before you leave the location because maybe it's a paid location and you have like a week to film there. If you leave that location and go to post production and check your footage and you, and you see and, and, and you discover that there's a mistake on it, that means you have to go back to the location. You have to pay, you have to rent the camera, you have to hire your production crew and all of that. So it will not be profitable to you so it's always best to watch what you are filmed all over and over again you go through your rushes and you ensure you have all you need before you leave the location so, next so ensure that your color is right i mean uh um it's i know we can make magic at post-production right so the editors the colorists they can add colors they can put effects and all of that but it's 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 easy the, the editor's job when you have the right color from your location. If you are filming a particular color and you have a pink, a, okay, so I'm filming this color and this is pink, this is pink. So while filming, I should not film this as purple. I should ensure that the pink comes out while filming. So when I get to post, the editor will have little work to do to ensure that this pink comes out nice. But if I film this, the, the pink in a particular color, when we get to post-production, they would um, need to work and put a lot of work into it to change the color. So just ensure you have the right color at production stage, your frame rate, ensure your framing is right. Also, you have, ensure you have all the angles and all the shots you need for a particular scene. If you are recording a live sound, please pay particular attention to your sound. Ensure you record your background sound, your ambience, so that it will help in editing. You know, when you have all your sound is very key as well. Ensure you listen to your sound when you are at your location. So when you're at your location, when you listen to your sound, you know that, okay, your sound is fine. And after getting the sound of the location, uh, the sound of um, the footage or the scene ensure you record the ambience also where you are not shooting the ambience of the location just without shooting just get the ambience because it can come in handy when editing when editing or in post pro next okay so post production i mean, I mean um I'm sure the mentor would then um, do justice to this at the post-production stage. So post-production basically is where the footages are edited, where you make the sound, the, the effect, the soundtrack is composed, you create your title, your project is completed for distribution basically. That's when, where you have your editing, your editing machine, the quality controls for different broadcast channels. So now which um, at the development stage, I talked about knowing 
where knowing your your channel so knowing where you want to show your content if you're shooting for youtube you need to get you need to know what is um youtube taking what kind of format is will youtube require for you to have your content on youtube if you plan to sell to net netflix what is netflix requirement so at post-production as when you ensure you have all the quality control you have your checks and you ensure that you have the exact formats required by the platform you want to use yes yeah, so so your color bars your color grading and then next so distribution distribution is the final stage of your project as a producer or as a filmmaker because that is where where you expect to make the return on your investment so this is where you make up your mind that okay do i want to distribute to a cinema or i want to sell to the tv network or i want to stream live or i want to release directly on social media i mean if you have a strong um youtube page or youtube channel you might want to release it on youtube and make your money on youtube maybe yours is an advocacy um story and you don't want it to be a paid a paid content right so you can release directly on social media and also it depends so you need to know how you want to distribute the film you are, or the project you're making so you need to ensure that you know you have a plan basically how you want to get it to the bigger audience how you want to get a return on your investment i mean with this age of um with this digital age we have a rapid converging of technologies you have viewers that it with their phones i mean they can watch from any part of the world so i mean so you just need to make up your mind what and where you want to decide what you want to do with your project do you want to make money off it or is it an advocacy or you just want to just want to like just um add value to the society so you just need to know what you want to do with it basically it might be for profit or for non-profit it's left for you to decide next so thanks for your time and if i would like to leave you with anything this would be my last word to you i mean when telling your story be original with your story people want to hear your story no matter what you have to say people want to hear i mean when you go on youtube and you click and you type anything most likely you'll see something i mean the other day i was checking how to kill a turkey and i google youtube and i saw hundreds of videos about how to kill a turkey on youtube so people are willing to hear your story people are ready to hear your story the question is are you ready to tell your story so tell your story like i said not necessarily a movie or when we say a story it's not necessarily a movie or a drama or a show it could be like a, what you enjoy doing do you enjoy lifestyle do you enjoy fashion do you enjoy food so whatever you like to do just make a story out of it do you do, you do, do it yourself whatever you want to do there are people you have audience there are people out there that are willing to listen and are willing to watch what you have to say it's time to start making your story it's time to tell your story thank you Oh, thank you very much, Aditola. So uh, I hope you guys have your questions ready and uh, putting them in the Q&A, which we'll be looking over right now. Uh, so checking out the Q&A real quick. Uh, I see a question here. And uh, just a minute. So uh, let's go to the Q&A session. So the first question, uh, I think should go to Supara. Uh, they're asking for a story to be effective and win. Does it uh, only should be a nice and liked by many watchers, or is it the one that you know left the most impact on their soul, like uh, love it the most or hate it the most? So, what do you guys think about that? Uh, for a story to be effective. I think it depends on what are your intentions behind those to, behind that story. Sometimes 
a nice story leaves a very powerful impact impact or uh, sometimes a story which is not liked by a lot of people also leaves a very powerful impact it all depends on what are your intentions behind that story and behind that movie that you are trying to tell others both ways both stories if even if it's not liked by many or even if it's hated by a lot of people both the stories leave impact thank you Perfect. Uh, do you have anything to add? Yes. Just like Trafina said, I mean, when um, making a story, you need to check your intentions. Why am I making this film? Why am I making this story? Why am I telling this story? So, I mean, if you don't get more um, enough likes on your video, it does not make does not mean your story. It's not not um. It's not impactful. So it depends on your target audience, like I said. Who are the people you are trying to target? Who are the people you are trying to reach? Maybe the people you are trying to reach are the minority. Maybe the people you are trying to reach are older generation, not maybe younger people. I mean, if you're trying to reach age, maybe age 45 and above, most likely 60% of those people are not online. They might watch your video and not click a like. They might watch your video and not share. But if you have a story targeted towards um, youth, say from 13 to 20, if they like your video, I mean, if, if a youth watch your video, most likely, most likely he or she is going to share with his or her friends on his or her social media and do, oh, I just saw this great, nice one from this person and all of that. So, I mean, just tell your story. It's telling a story, it's a win-win situation. Because even if you reach just one person, what is the impact you are leaving behind for that person? What, do you, what, what is the person taking out of the film? So that one person might change hundreds or thousands of people. So just tell your story. And with time, you get better at it. That's what I'll say. Thank you very much. Uh, and the next question was, uh, how long does the story need to be, I presume? So maybe I will answer that. Uh, the idea is to create, uh, as I said earlier, a 30 second to three minute video. And in it, you can you know, tell whatever story you want. You know? uh, maybe if I can look it up just a minute here. Uh, Yeah, so it's about, uh, so the topics are, can be diversity, belonging, resisting racism, injustices, community, personal journeys, and or even starting over for those who came to Canada as newcomers and stuff. So there are many topics. And then the idea is, you know, choose one, create a 30 second to three minute video and yeah, share it and we'll see. Luckily, you might win great prizes, of course. Also, uh, another question, uh, are there any apps or platforms you recommend for editing short movies? Uh, I have a few in mind. So Kind Master, there is, uh, I think, uh, for the phone, if you're going to use your phone to do the video, there is apps for other computers, video editor, example, for Windows. And uh, I think on MacBooks or Apple computers, there is iMovies and stuff. Uh, I will also let uh, Supana and Aditola, if they have any recommendation for apps that, you know, have easy interface so that the, the mentors can use them to make the videos. Okay. I, I'm a producer. <laughs> I'm not a post-production person. So I would um, recommend that the person should join the next session for the post-production. Yes, because um, I... Um, um, I'm a producer, basically, so I don't do editing and I don't do, I just stay with my calling, basically. Okay. Oh, see, I'm a marketer, but I still use a lot of, like, there are, there are some apps which are normally free. Uh, they are softwares and which are big for beginners. One is VSDC and it, it, it's free and it's, it's for beginner and it's pretty good place to start. 
The next is if you have a MacBook or iPad, you can go for iMovie, which provide, which is also, it comes with your uh, MacBook and it's a quick and easy way to edit videos for beginners. And also if you want to know the detail of all the editing apps, I would also recommend as Editola to join the next session to get the details of the video editing apps. But these two are the ones that I pretty much use. All right, thank you very much, Suparna. Uh, also, uh, we are having another session. I think uh, if you guys already know about that, uh, it's next week on 23rd. It will be about, uh, I think, editing and, uh, and direction. And there, I think you will find more information about, about the editing apps and everything that is related to production. Uh, yeah, also, we will also maybe share some slides with you that uh, we'll have one of our group organized that has some, you know, resources that you can use, uh, stuff that you can use to make your video. Yeah, uh, are there any more questions or are we good? Is there any more questions? We still have about 10 minutes before the session ends. So feel free to add the questions if you have, if you have any. So somebody asked uh, if I can type the name of the apps uh, of the apps in the chat. So I will just go ahead and put a few apps that I know in the chat. There is one more question. It's in the chat. What are mentors? Yeah. Hi, Rama. So someone asked a question. Okay, uh, let me. What are our mentors' favorite experiences? Well, storytelling or filmmaking. So I will give you a chance. You guys go ahead and talk about it as I type the names of the videos. Okay. Okay. Fatna, you want to go first? You can go. <laughs> okay. Okay. So my experience, like I said, I started filmmaking at um, age 19 as a youth. So um, starting filmmaking, I, I tell people, you don't need any form of experience to start telling a story. Just start from where you are. Start telling the story from where you are. I mean, I just, I, I, I like telling stories. I like entertainment and all of that. And I put up a show together. I recorded it. And I took it to a television station in my country. Although they did not um, take it, they said, oh, they turned it down and all of that. But eventually, like two years after then, I met with the marketing manager of the television station. And it was like, oh, we've been looking for you. You didn't even drop your contact and all of that. I was like, oh, I didn't even have a phone. I said, oh, do you mind working with me? I said, oh, sure, of course, I'm in school, but what can we do? I said, oh, I can work on a part-time basis and all. And that was how I started my filmmaking journey. Just starting where you are. Someone is watching. Someone will take notes. It's to pay off eventually. I mean, now we have the social media. This generation is so blessed. We are so blessed <laughs> in this generation. I mean, you don't need to go to a television station like... <laughs> Fine and go through the stress to get your story out there. Just record with your phone or a any mini camera. Record your editing and put it out there. There are people, like I said, there are people out there willing and ready to watch your story. Yeah. Basically, 
So from then, I mean, I've, I've done, <laughs> that was how it begins really. And I started making films, I started learning on the job. And now I do full-time production. I have shows across the, like on, I have three shows running now in my country on like 10 television stations across Nigeria. So it's, so just start from where you are busy. Talking about my favorite experience. So I'm a marketer, I'm like into communication. So we share a lot of stories on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, <laughs> and YouTube. But my favorite experience is like when I was in college, I have to work on a community project where we decided to interview a lot of international students, newcomers talking about their, share, talking about their experience of being in Canada as a newcomer, how life has changed. What was their experience when they first came here? What has been changed? What they want to be changed? What, what are the expectations of being in a new country? And that was a really rewarding experience. I get to interact with a lot of newcomers, a lot of international students. And there were some students. So we, uh, there was a guy who came from India and he has to wait for nine hours on the airport because there was nobody to pick him up. So like, so that process, that video was three minutes, but we shot a lot of small videos, small clips, and it was like a three-day task. And that was the best experience I had in the storytelling or in the filmmaking. And that video turned out to be very good. And it was like some heart-touching moments, some emotional moments, and all of these international students and newcomers, they came here with so much hopes and the expectations. And some hopes turned out to be true, and for some, they have to work very hard. So I would say that was my favorite experience in the storytelling. It really moved me. Awesome. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Supana. So uh, thank you, Aditola and Supana, for joining us. Please, uh, if you can, you know, uh, silent round of applause for them. They've done a really great job today. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you for having us. Thank you for having. Us. If there isn't any more questions, uh, I think I will go ahead and wrap up. And for those who have questions and have not been answered today, uh, we're looking forward for you to join us in our next session. So before we wrap up, I would like to encourage you and your friends to, and youth in your networks to join us in this campaign. The Storytelling for Change campaign is now officially open until August 1st. That's how long you have until you submit your videos, uh, I think, and you can find out more about how to submit your film in our website uh, migration.ubc.ca forward slash storytelling for change i think uh, that will be posted down in the chat uh, please mark your calendars for the second mentorship session on the direction and editing next week on tuesday 23rd june at the same time 12 to 1 uh, pacific daylight time that's our time so do the calculations and see what time it will be at your place uh, you can find the registration link in the upcoming webinar for our website and in the chat box. Stay well and see you next week. Thank you, Thank you for joining us. <laughs>